Yes. Yes. You square it, so we want to minimize this, the distance squared. And even though it's not necessary for this calculation, jumping ahead to the next major objective, and then we want to sort of minimize the average distance. In other words, even though you can this plus this plus this plus this, you can work with that, but you can, it's easy to work with an average. So you're going to divide by the number of dots, which is n. For example, in our case, there are four pairs of numbers, so n is 4. So you divide by 4, except you don't divide by 4. What do we divide by when we calculate? This is a kind of a variance, right? How much variation is, yes, uh, Alex, I'm sorry, Alex, yes. Yeah. You would think you do n minus 1, that's comparable to what happened in chapters 3 or something. We do it n minus 1, course. but in this chapter we do n minus, anybody have a good, anyone want to take a guess, lucky guess? n minus 2, okay, n minus 2. Why 2? Well, again, I'll give you a mathematical reasons, but I don't think you care about the mathematical reason. The reason is because when you have a picture with one dot, can you, can you do the mathematics of this chapter? If somebody gave you a pair of numbers, one dot, and said, figure out all these calculations, it makes no sense. What if they gave you two dots? Could you figure out a straight line? Yes, but there's no possibility of minimizing anything. There's only one perfect straight line if it's the two dots. It's only with the third and fourth and fifth dot can you start talking about the discrepancy between the straight line. So in a sense, the, the first two dots are wasted, and it's n minus 2. Now, yes? No, no, no. Uh, later on, this formula will be a kind of a standard. Basically, we, but with this formula, which we're going to learn if we have time today, I don't think we will, the next formula is to measure, in fact, how close the dots are to the straight line. Um, and that you can think of it as a kind of a variation between the dots and the straight line. It's not the variation between two numbers, it's the, the variation between it. So it is, this will turn out to be very similar to a kind of a standard devi deviation. It has a similar symbol, a similar terminology. But right now, all I'm trying to do is this is the equation I'm using to measure, to, to, uh, to solve the problem of coming up with the B0 and the B1 that, that minimizes this whole calculation. Now, where in this calculation do you see a B0 and a B1? If we're gonna, I'm claiming this, cal this, this formula, this, this term, this, this expression, will help us eventually get the B0 and the B1. But it has to be part of the equation or else it won't, it won't, you can't use it. So where do you see a B0 and a B1 in, built into this equation? Yes. Yeah, the y hat is equal to b0 plus b1. So let's substitute the y hat and put down b0 plus b1x. So now we have, now we have, now, could you do it by trial and error? If I was really, maybe if I wanted to teach you, just pick a, a certain number for b0, pick a number for b1, and see how, and then do the calculations. See how far, then basically plot it and calculate how far they were. And you put a number, maybe it comes out to 36.2. Then do the same thing for another B0 and a B1. It may come down to 35.5, which is lower. Then do another B0 and maybe, you know, keep doing it until finally you can't get it any smaller. That's the perfect B0 and B1. Now, but that's of course a very inelegant and very old-fashioned way of doing it. As in fact, it goes back three or 400 years because in the interim, three or 400 years ago, what was invented that will help you calculate that kind of thing? Starts with a C, calculus. <laughs> Calculus, okay, and if you want to minimize something, how do you min minimize something in calculus? You take its derivative, you set it to zero, you solve the equation, and then you do a double derivative to see if it's a second derivative, see if it's a max or a min. I mean, all the stuff which brings back nightmares, I'm sure, to a lot of you, um, is really a prerequisite for this class, but I don't really burden you with the calculus, but this, I just want to show you what the, your education you had previously can be used here. Except how many unknowns do we have in this equation? That's an important question to, 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 to confront. How many unknowns are here in this equation? Raise your hand if you want to answer. I know I haven't been giving out these papers, but uh, anybody that says something today, see me after class and I'll give you credit for it. I'll take it, we'll do it on the honor system. Um, uh, what's, well, how many unknowns are in this equation? Anybody raise their hand? Yes. Two, the B0 and the B1. Okay, now what's, the, what's a special kind of calculus, a more advanced calculus, for calculating uh, a derivative when there are two unknowns? Starts with a P. Okay, last chance. It's called a partial derivative. Everybody remember the partial derivatives? How many people learned about partial derivatives at some point in their in their college career? Come on, you got to learn partial derivatives. No, it's old fashioned. What? Anybody remember learning partial derivatives? 
Oh my God. Okay. Partial derivatives has this. It doesn't have this. This is the symbol of like dy dx. This is a partial. It's like a finite. Okay. Any anyway, partial dy. Okay. And the point is, you, when you're getting two unknowns, so you're going to have two equations, two unknowns, and all the stuff you learned about. Do, do you guys learned how to solve two equations and two unknowns? Everybody learned that at some point in high school or college. After all is said and done, okay, now we're going to jump to go to the chase. So after all is said and done, I'm going to put down the equation for the B1. B1 is equal to N, so, and this is going to look like a complicated equation, but 60 seconds from now, you can see how simple it is to use. N, again, taking the, setting it up, calculating double derivatives and all kinds of stuff, and solving all kinds of mathematics, you end up with the following, and then combining terms. Hope I can do this by heart. Okay, that's the equation. And it looks like, it looks like Greek, because it is partly Greek. This is the Greek letter sigma. Um, now, what is the equation? First I'll say it verbally, then we'll actually do it to show you, show you how easy it is. But basically the equation calls for calculating the sum of the x times the y. What does that involve? You do x times y, x times y, x times y, x times y, and then you sum it together. You just add them all up. So, what? And it's a number of dots. The biggest mistake that people make in this chapter is to think that n is how much? What can somebody tell me the kind of mistake you can easily make? Eight. But please write down. N is a number of pairs of numbers, a number of lines of data, the number of dots on the page. It's not eight, it's four. OK. The easiest way to, to, to implement this is by creating extra columns on the original. Again, you're always going to be given two columns to start every problem in the entire chapter, x, y. We're going to need an x times an x, which is the x squared over here. And eventually, even though we don't need it yet, we're going to need a y times the y. And after we get all those numbers, we're going to have to get the sum of it, the sum of the x's, the sums of the y's, the sums of the x, y, the sum of the x squared, and the sum of the y squared. So let's go ahead and do it. 1 times 2 is 2. 3 times 4 is 12. 4 times 6 is 24. 2 times 5 is 10. 1 times 1 is 1. x squared is 9. x squared is 16. 4. 1, I'm sorry, this is 4. This is 16. Let's get a little bit neater. <coughs> and this is called the sales. This is the y. So the, six, the y squared is 4, the y squared is 16. 6 times 6 is 36. 5 times 5 is 25. So what is the sum of the x? This adds up to. 10, this adds up to 17, this adds up to 48, this adds up to 30, and this adds up to 81. Okay, and if I made a careless mistake, please, somebody should tell me. In other words, don't, don't be passive, actually do the numbers, make sure they come out the same way for you. Now, let's plug the numbers in. What are you plugging for the N? What do you plug in for the N? Four, thank you. What do you plug in for the xy, summation xy? That's the column that said is equal to 48. So it's 4 times 48 minus 10 times 17 Ta divided by 4 times, what's the summation x squared? 30. So 4 times 120 minus, now this is the only little tricky if, unless you're you know, not too mathematically sensitive. What does this come out to? The summation of the x by itself is just the whole, the whole thing, which is 10 squared. So this, becomes 10, this comes out to 10 squared, or 100. This is 4 times, what did we say before, the 30. So it's 120 minus 100. The bottom part of it comes out to 20, as far as I can tell. This is 4 times 48. And this is minus 10 times 17. I apologize. More to the video than to you, because you guys can probably still see it. And if you can see it, you can certainly welcome to our empty seats here. And anybody who really has a hard time seeing the board, you can either get me to write bigger or just move your seat up, which is the easiest thing to do. OK, so what is it? That, um, hopefully by now somebody took the initiative and did the calculation. What does it come out to? Now, if it came out to 47,000, we know it's got to be wrong, because we know the slope is around 1. And if it came out to minus 25.2, we know it's a mistake. And if it came out to 0. 0.0003, it's a mistake. So, but what does it come out to? Assuming I made no mistake and you don't make a mistake, yes. 1.1, just like we, just like we 
should have guessed over here. Now, now we need another formula for the B0. 